Good morning, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to this morning's uh, morning prayer. It's Wednesday the 30th of, of March, and so we give God thanks for bringing us to a new day. And we ask that he will protect us, sustain us, and keep us through the through the, through the trials of this day. So let us pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious Spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence, before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. But now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 
In you I hope all the day long. Oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. In the collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right. Our psalm this morning is Psalm number 9090, Psalm 90. Psalm 90. A psalm of Moses, a prayer of Moses, the only psalm attributed to Moses. Lord, you have been my dw our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, for you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting you are god you turn people back to dust saying return to dust you mortals a thousand years in your sight or like a day that has gone has just gone by or like a watch in the night yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death they are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years as we have seen trouble, may your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. One of those great psalms, sisters and brothers, a psalm to remind us of our mortality, that in fact we are like grass. In the morning we spring up, but in the evening we wither away and die. And um, it's, a, it's a sober reminder us that every day we are to be grateful to God, each morning 
We are to seek his unfailing love. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Uh, and and, and what, what Moses is saying in this psalm, in that verse, sisters and brothers, is that if this is what our lives are like, we are flimsy, we are fragile. Any moment now and we are gone. Life is not certain. There is no guarantee about tomorrow. There is no guarantee about the end of this day. Anything is possible. Our lives are, 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 are fragile and, um, and it's in God's hands. God is the one who controls it all. Our days, verse 9, all our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. There's that sense of that God is in charge, that God rules every moment of my life. And he says, he says, our days may come to 70 or 80 years if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. And so, you know, there, there are today, today, m because of modern science, people are living to, to 100, you know, in their 90s to 100 and so on. It's modern science keeping people alive for much longer these days. But still, we pass away. It, 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 we, we, it, it comes to an end with a moan. And, but yet, the best of those days, no matter how long we live in this world, sisters and brothers, the best of those days are still filled with trouble and sorrow. And so the psalmist say, teach us to number our days. Teach us to, to take an account of every day so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. If we learn to take account of each day, we then will not take any day for granted. If we learn to take account of each day, we will have wisdom for how we live each day. We will recognize that we don't waste a day. Because sisters and brothers, we are never gonna see this day again. When it's gone, it's gone. As they say, you know, when, 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 they are, when something is on sale, when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, and so ask God, Lord, teach us to number our days. Teach us to take account of every day so that it, just, it doesn't just pass. And we, we're like, where did, where did Wednesday go? Where did Tuesday go? Where did Monday go? We, we, never t we, ne we don't take account of our days. May God help us to do that today, each day, and to rejoice in those days. He says, make us glad for as many days you have afflicted us. Let us rejoice in those days because we know that God is in control, sisters and brothers. We don't control the day. God does. And the last verse, it's a great prayer. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us and establish the work of our hands. May God bless the work of our hands each day. May God grant us favor every day. It's a great song to meditate on. Hebrews chapter 10 is our New Testament reading. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 1 to 18. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, 
and would no longer have guilty, have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to this uh, to, to us about this. First, he says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and law, lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been written, where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Amen. And thank God for the sacrifice of Christ. Because of his sacrifice, we no longer need to make sacrifices day after day as they did in the temple. And he starts by saying, you know, the sacrifices, uh, the law on, on, on all the the religious requirements, God required them. But now he has set those aside. Um, the worshippers, verse 2, for the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins if the sacrifices did do away with sin. But of course, they didn't. But he says, those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. They didn't actually do anything about sins, but they were an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. The sacrifices of the Old Testament never took away the sins of the people. It was a reminder of their sins and a, and, and a reminder that God required blood offering to, to do away with sin but the real sacrifice was yet to come because that sacrifice is jesus christ so verse 10 and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of jesus christ once for all because he shed his blood once for all he offered himself once for all now we are cleansed. We, our sins are, 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 have been forgiven as a result of his one sacrifice that he made for us. Day after day, every priest stands and performs religious duties, verse 11. But, verse 12, when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down. At the right hand of God. And to sit down means the sacrifice is accomplished. That was one of the important things about the, the, the priest in the Old Testament. 
there was no place for the priest to sit down in the temple. He goes in, he makes the sacrifice, and he comes back out. You don't sit down. But here, Jesus makes his sacrifice, and he sits down. It's a symbolic representation that no more sacrifice is going to be made. It's over. The sacrifice for our sins is done. And so he says, verse 14, For by one sacrifice... He has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. That's you and I, sisters and brothers, by the one sacrifice. And just to add that it is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that we are being made holy. Now, that's important because we are not being made holy through our acts, through our efforts, through our will and our decisions and our Whatever it is in us, we are being made holy through the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is because Jesus Christ died for us, that death, that sacrifice, that shedding of blood is, make, is making us holy every day. So sisters and brothers, this this one, you know, that is why we say the power of the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. It washes every stain of sin. The blood of Jesus, it cleanses us. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. That, sisters and brothers, is the power of the sacrifice that Jesus meant for us. In a few weeks, we are going to be celebrating that sacrifice. It's called Good Friday. On that day, we remember the sacrifice of our Lord for sinners like us. That sacrifice, that perfect once for all sacrifice that makes us perfect and fit to be in the presence of God. Amen. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for the sacrifice that you have um, made on our behalf, that you shed your blood once for all. And because that blood is so valuable, it's, 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 it's more precious than anything else in this universe. Because that blood is so, much, so valuable, Lord, it cleanses our sin once for all. We don't need sacrifices every day or every year to wash away our guilty stain. But your blood, your blood have accomplished for us our salvation made perfect once for all. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember those on our hearts today. We pray for them. I do want to pray for little Elijah Minani, Pras's son, who, who became five, I think five on Monday. So we thank God for Prossy and the family up there in Sheffield. And we pray for little Elijah and wish him a happy birthday. He's belated now because it was Monday. And we thank God and we pray for him. We pray that God will strengthen him and raise him up and grow him into uh, a, 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 a young man with wisdom and strength and honor and grace. So Lord, we pray for Prossy and the family in Sheffield and, and Solomon down here. We, we ask now that you keep them safe, watch over them and protect them from all harm. And we pray for little Elijah that he grows up strong in you. Bless him this week as he, rem as he remembers, celebrates his fifth birthday in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for Rona and Keog, Crystal, Pat, Deborah, Jean, Hannah, Comfort, Maxine, uh, Wendy, Mokund, Joanna, Dion, uh, Jane, Lindsay, Sue. We pray for Sue and Daisy and Andrew. Um, pray for Pauline and Roy and family and Doreen. 
and family, Fifa Muriel, Ryan, David, and Bernadette Hoyt, Dolly and Desmond, Doreen, I pray for Doreen already, Doreen and family, Thelma, Veronica, and Chester, Walter, Jean, and uh, Auntie Janie, and Monica. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That's our, more, our St. Patrick's prayer. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and give you his all-sufficient grace. May he keep you safe today through the perfect sacrifice of Christ. Today, sisters and brothers, and every day for all eternity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers. <clears throat>